Right, we're live. Super. OK, thank you very much then. So good evening, everybody, councillors, members of the public. Um, I'm David Stevens. I'm the mayor of Reading and I'll be chairing the meeting this evening. Um, first of all, welcome to the meeting, which is obviously once again being held online. Um, social distancing rules are afraid still in place. And councils are meeting tonight on this video conference platform instead of meeting in person at the Civic Centre. And once again, we'll be meeting in accordance with the Coronas Act 2020 regulations, which allowed local authority committees to be conducted online, attended remotely by members and officers. Um, I'll now take a bit of time to just go through the procedure, although I think actually we're all now fairly familiar with it, so I'll go to fairly, fairly promptly. Um, although the meetings are held online, the public and press can still see and hear uh, the proceedings. Um, the general papers have been published on the Council's website and the Modern Government app. Uh, and these papers are the ones that will be considered by members this evening. As usual, if you want to speak an item, um, I've not been informed in, in advance, please indicate in the chat section. Again, where I think we're all familiar with that. Um, please obviously just use the chat to indicate, otherwise it gets a bit confusing as to who's indicating and who's having a good old chat. Um, Rachel, the business before us this evening, I'll seek general consent in order to avoid lengthy roll calls an item, um, largely based on these spokesmen for the different groups. However, when it comes to voting, I'll probably go by acclamation, but give individual councillors a chance if they so wish to dissent from their group view, if they want to indicate so. Otherwise, um, we'll say we'll do it by um, acclamation, which will get us through the, the proceedings somewhat more quickly. Um, that, that actually, this, that, sorry, that actually, this proposal doesn't affect the right of three councillors to demand that any vote be recorded in accordance with council's procedural rule 24 brackets one, in which case we're going to do a full roll call. As this is the last meeting prior to the council's election on the 6th of May, before we get underway with tonight's business, as is customary, I will call on group leaders to speak about councillors in their group who might not be standing for re-election. So are there any group leaders who would like to speak now? If I may, Mr Mayor. Please do, Leader. Thank you kindly, Mr Mayor. So uh, the Labour group have two councillors who are retiring at the forthcoming election. So I just wanted to, to pay tribute to them. Firstly, uh, Councillor Emmett McKenna, who was first elected in May 2016 for Whitley Ward um, and has been a, a most studious councillor in his time with us, uh, has evidently enjoyed his membership of the Audit and Governance Committee in particular, as well as, of course, the, the Planning Applications Committee. And it's his attention to detail in his work and in the way he approaches uh, the business of the council that has led to him being an exceptional and exemplary chair of the planning committee since May 2019. I think he's excelled in the role and has overseen the process of determination of many important applications. And I hope you'll think back fondly on his time as chair of the committee. Uh, he's also a man of a very impressive appetite who I suspect can prop up Sweeney's business on his own if he so chose and I shall miss the sight of him uh, enjoying a, a, a pie in the Labour group room before a major committee meeting or a council meeting and I wish him all the best for the future. Also uh, standing down we have Councillor Tony Jones who's been with us since he was first elected in 1984 and in that time has represented Whitley Ward, Battle Ward and now Redlands Ward of course. Uh, most recently he's been the lead councillor for adult social care. Prior to that he was the lead councillor for education. Uh, further back in time he's been the chair of the housing committee, the chair of Reading Transport uh, and twice mayor of the borough. Um, Tony has a, a, a most mischievous sense of humour and I, I feel that life may be perhaps slightly quieter without councillor Jones around but will probably be a little bit more dull as well and I shall especially miss his public speaking ability and the personal conviction that he always brings to debates both public and private debates and I always recall that an ongoing debate he and I have about the the meaning of the mathematical concept of, of average um, but I hope Councillor Jones finds plenty of time to enjoy the golf course in retirement uh, and I especially hope that he still finds occasion to wind me up um, every now and then, uh, even if it's not as a councillor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. 
Um, thank you, Lena. Can I just actually add to that as well, particularly in terms of McKenna, because he obviously served on the Audit and Governance Committee for some time. I really do appreciate his contribution to that. Um, he was very tenacious as well. He always knew there were certain things he was going to go for, and absolutely reliably, he went straight for them, and I think added very much to the, the teeth of what we did. So I'm, I'm very much appreciative. Councillor Jones, I think you'd like to speak. Yes, thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, as Councillor Brock has said, I was first elected on the 3rd of May 1984, and now nearly 37 years later, this is my last council meeting. Not without a few breaks, of course, but I've enjoyed the challenges, challenges of representing Whitley, Redlands, Battle, and then back to Redlands. Overall, 30 years public service spread across five different decades. So, Mr Mayor, thank you for allowing me to spend a few minutes recalling some of the highlights of my time on the Council. And let me say from the off, these highlights are more often than not the result of the work of dedicated teams of others with me at the helm, rather than simply the product of my own endeavour. In the 1980s, I worked with others from outside the Council to get Reading to appoint an AIDS liaison officer, one of the first in the country. In the 1990s, I'm proud that during my time as chair of housing, Reading became a top rated housing authority. I led the empty home strategy, which opened up over 500 private sector properties across the town, and which was heralded by national government as a groundbreaking initiative and model to other councils. And we also built new housing inside and outside the borough boundaries from the Dell on London Road to Red Cottages at Calcott and many, many more. And then there were the days spent with former councillor Roger Hughes in the old Kennet room with a team of architects agreeing the detailed designs for what was to become the Oracle Shopping Centre. Later, as chair of Reading Buses, my role was an agent of change and a necessary break with the past. During this time, Reading saw the introduction of the colour coded bus routes across its entire network and an expansion of services, including introducing Boxing Day bus services. Within three years, the company had a different ethos and became a nationally recognised bus operator, regularly winning national industry awards and has not looked back since. As lead member for education, I had the urgent task of raising the borough standing from a very low ebb languishing in the bottom three of 154 LEAs in England, moving Reading up to an upper quartile authority within three years. During this time, Reading also saw a massive investment in new school classrooms in junior and secondary schools across the time. And towards the end of my tenure in that position, I identified the need and began the planning for a new secondary school in the town, which will soon open as the River Academy. And now as lead member for adult social care, I'm so glad that we've posted a transformation plan for the future. This most recently introduced programme will see a multi-million pound investment in new, more accessible and conveniently located day services and modern residential care facilities. A long overdue investment in people and places. During the COVID pandemic, we resisted government pressure to discharge hospital patients to care homes, instead using a hotel as a safe staging post en route to going home. This is now a model of best practice, which has been copied across the country during the most recent infection waves. I also had the privilege to serve twice as the Mayor of Reading. First time round, I raised what is still a record amount of money over £55,000 for local charities in a period of office shortened due to council elections being delayed by an outbreak of the, of the foot and mouth disease. I also initiated the twinning with Spitestone in Barbados to reflect the diverse and rich heritage in modern Reading. I was honoured to represent the town in a Thanksgiving visit to Reading, Berks County in Pennsylvania in the immediate aftermath of the 9-11 attacks in 2001. And there have been so many local projects, including the trend setting outdoor fitness gym in Sintra Park, since replicated in parks around the town. Developing the hugely popular but sadly short lived Oxford Road Community Forum with Councillor Chris Maskell is another highlight. 
and then facilitating residence parking schemes where people wanted them. This has always been satisfying. And hundreds of and hundreds and hundreds of pieces of casework working with de dedicated comrades like Councillor David Absalom, covering a wide range of topics from multiple traffic calming and 20 mile an hour schemes, planning issues, nuisance neighbours, littering and bins, school places and all the issues we as councillors are all aware of. My most recent casework this week was a request for a new dog fouling bin. And there you have it, the life of a councillor, <laughs> dealing with multi-million pound projects one day and dog fouling bins the next. I've worked across parties where appropriate and stood alone when necessary. I pushed with Councillor Terry for the abandonment of the then council's cabinet system to be replaced by the more inclusive committee system we enjoy today and forced a U-turn and the abandonment of the council's plans for grand new civic offices in St Mary's Butts at a time when it was supported by all parties. And I'm very proud, very proud that I fought a long battle inside the council to settle its equal pay obligations to low paid women workers. But Mr Mayor, also a few, a few confessions. I must also confess that when Chair of Housing, I used the same empty bottle of champagne to celebrate the multiple openings that we had. The idea of the colour coded bus network was a straight lift from the London underground map. And as chair of licensing, I admit now I used to turn the heat in off in the old council chamber so as to encourage shorter meetings. I did my best. Whether this was always enough, others will always de will decide. But now, having retired from my paid employment two years ago and having had two hip replacements at 63, it is time to move on to a new chapter in my life. I've been asked if I might return to the council in the future. My answer is to say never. But then again, perhaps it's better never to say never. Colleagues, thank you and good luck. So thank you very much for that. Uh, a youthful 63 year old Councillor Coney Jones. Well done. Thank you very much. I think Councillor Skeets, you want to say something? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I won't keep you long, but I, I couldn't um, let this moment go by without um, just just saying something um, as Councillor Jones is standing down. But first of all, uh, I would like to associate myself with the comments made by the leader of the council uh, for both Councillor McKenna and Councillor Jones. But uh, Councillor Jones and I have worked together for many years and uh, we have done so, I think, always in the right spirit and uh, I may not always have agreed with his political stance and he certainly will not have always agreed with mine, but we've always kept a level of good humour. Um, there is a very softer side from what many of you may may not see. You see him as a politician, but I've actually seen the other side of Councillor Jones. I recall when both my mother and my father, um, when they passed away, um, he left me really lovely messages, uh, quite unexpected, out of the blue, but that showed the level of kindness and uh, the compassion that uh, Councillor Jones has. And that's something that I will never forget. So thank you, Councillor Jones, for that. Um, also, I do thank you for your friendship and uh, when we've worked together on licensing, because it's never political, we've worked together very well. We've always appreciated one another, our views. Um, but also during my mayoral year and leading up to my mayoral year, um, Councillor Jones was very supportive. He helped me raise money for my charity and he also um, made me aware of certain things that perhaps I would not have been aware of, i.e. the mayoral budget and explained all of that to me. So I'm very grateful to Councillor Jones. He, had, he didn't have to do that, but that again shows the measure of the man. And um, I shall miss you, Councillor Jones. I've always respected um, your ability to speak. Um, and um, even though I may not have agreed with what you're actually saying, I've always agreed your ability to do so and uh, I always admired that. So um, without further ado, I wish you well. Um, I, I know that uh, Councillor Terry is remaining, um, obviously, so she will keep me up to date with what you're up to. 
but um, I like to think out of this politics aside, there is still a, this kind of friendship there that we can perhaps um, in the future, um, we will reminisce and uh, on our council days. But um, I do wish you all the very best, Councillor Jones, for the future. Take care. Very good. Super. Thank you very much for that, Councillor Skeets. Illuminating to also to hear there's actually a mayoral budget. Must find out about that. OK, um, so Councillor McKenna, um, Emmett McKenna, you said you're not going to speak this evening. We understand that. So thank you very much for what you've done. And uh, as you say, you'll sign off as chair at your final planning committee meeting. Just two other announcements. Um, something I wasn't even aware of, but I think a few people were, that the, the organisers of the this year's national census decided to do a sort of um, competition recognising people's efforts. And there are only 22 awards nationally. I gather there are hundreds of applications for this. And I think we're very pleased to say that one of our number, Councillor um, Jane Stanford Beale, has actually been recognised, one of the two people in the South East, um, basically for her work um, for, for sort of families and autistic families in, in Berkshire. So many congratulations to her. Um, we should also note, I don't know if you've seen the pictures of her in the media, she has a rather large sort of lurid fuchsia pink disc which she can now entitle to affix the side of her house. The only interesting point is it has to come through planning committee, so all of you those who are sitting on planning will now have a, a very jolly evening deciding whether or not to approve her uh, disc being affixed. OK, so that's that. And then the last item, just to say that I think people have been, people have been aware that there have been various um, moments today um, recognising, commemorating, if you like, a year from the start of the, 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 the pandemic and obviously commemorating the many people that have died. Um, there's also given me a little commemoration, I think, well, I say little, um, nationally at eight o'clock this evening. So we've decided that if the meeting is still in progress, is at eight o'clock, um, we'll pause for five minutes, allow those that wish to go out and uh, light a candle or I think um, shine a, a torch up into the sky and then we'll resume at about eight, five past eight um, if we're still going. If we're finished, so be it, but if we're still going, we will stop just for five minutes to allow people to, 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 to mark that moment. OK, so I'll proceed then. Um, oh, sorry, somebody else is asking. Is it CG, is that Councillor Grassoff? Who's it is, it is Chair. Just, I just wanted to very quickly say a couple of words. Would that be OK? Uh, it would. Sorry, I know it's slightly please, unorthodox. Please carry on. Um, I just wanted to say that. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that um, I was going to be standing down um, at this election and um, uh, triggering a by-election therefore because um, as some of you may know I have been um, uh, doing a PGCE and I will be becoming a teacher and um, I uh, will therefore hopefully be looking for a job in Reading which will mean that I can't um, still be a councillor at the same time um, if I'm in a council maintain a, a local authority maintained school. Um, I just didn't want to say very much except to say that it's been an absolute privilege to work with everybody and um, I have just had the most amazing experience and it's been a, a, as I said a real privilege to to work with everybody on the council but also to um, work for my residents as well. Um, that's really all I wanted to say. So thank you very much to everybody and um, I hopefully will see you out and about um, over the coming years. All right, thank you. OK, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Grass. I, I wasn't aware you necessarily want to make that announcement this evening, so fair enough. That's jolly good and it's pleasing to see a couple of the, the current teachers welcome you to the profession, which is uh, good for you and so I hope you enjoy it, of course. So thank you for your time. OK, um, I'll carry on um, sort of reverting back to the sort of the nor more normal agenda. Um, thank you, Councillors. So I'll now proceed on to tonight's agenda. As usual, I'll ask our members to introduce themselves to the benefit of the public and also to ensure that, that everyone's in attendance as expected and they can hear and speak to the meeting. Um, can I remind members and officers to put on their microphones on mute when you're not speaking? When called to speak, you should unmute your microphone and pause for about three seconds to allow the slight time delay in the connection. You must also remember to put your cameras on shortly before being called to speak, otherwise you'll not be visible on screen as you start your contribution. If you do not put on your camera at all, you will not be visible throughout your speech. 
as ever at the mercy of individuals of broadband services, as I well discovered in the last meeting. Um, and if we lose somebody, so be it, we'll carry on. And as long as we have 12 members present, we will be for it. I'll now do a roll call of councillors. Um, as I say your name, please introduce yourselves to the meeting. So I obviously introduced myself already and will be chairing the meeting for the rest of the evening. And off we go alphabetically. Um, Councillor David Absalom. Good evening, Chair. Councillor David Absalom, Redlands Ward. Councillor Debs Absalom. Good evening, Mr Mayor. Councillor Debs Absalom, Norcott Ward. For those of you wondering, I think the Absaloms are sharing a PC this evening. Um, so that's why they're both out. And, uh, have... <laughs> Councillor <laughs> Ayub. Good evening, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Ahmed Ayub for Abbey Ward, also Chair of Traffic Management Subcommittee. Councillor Balsden. Good evening, Mr Mayor. Councillor Isabel Balsden, Maple Durham Ward. Thank you. Councillor Barnett Ward. Uh, good evening, Chair. Adele Barnett Ward, Caversham Ward Councillor and Leader Member for Neighbourhoods and Communities. Councillor Brock. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Councillor Jason Brock, I'm Leader of the Council and Councillor for Southcote Ward. Councillor Carnell. Uh, good evening, Mr Mayor. Councillor Paul Carnell, a uh, Thames Ward Councillor. Councillor Challenger. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Challenger, Kate's Grove Ward. Councillor Davis. Good evening, Mr Mayor. Um, Councillor for Caversham Ward. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Councillor um, Devine. Hi, Ricky Devine, uh, Lib Dem Councillor for Tidehurst Ward. Councillor Eden. Good evening, Mr Mayor. Councillor Rachel Eden for Whitley Ward and your deputy. Ah, indeed. And Councillor Emerson has sent her apologies this evening. Um, and next up is Councillor Ennis. Hello. <clears throat> yep. Thank you, David. Uh, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor John Ennis, lead councillor for housing and also Southcote Ward. Thank you. Good. Councillor Gittings. Yes, good evening, Mr Mayor. Uh, councillor Paul Gittings uh, for Minster Ward and Chair of the Strategic Environment Planning and Transport Committee. Councillor Grassoff, we've just heard of, so if you're happy, we'll proceed. Councillor Hacker. Thank you, Mr Mayor. So Councillor Hacker of Battle Ward, uh, Chair of Reading um, Art and Heritage Forum and the Cultural Education Partnership. And I'd also just like to thank, thank Councillor Grassoff for her hard work with Homes to Reading, of which I am Chair of Directors. Thank you for that. Councillor Hoskin. Hi, yeah, I'm great. I'm Graham Hoskin. I'm uh, councillor for Norcott Ward and lead councillor for health, wellbeing and sport. Thank you. Councillor James. Good evening, Mr Mayor. Councillor Sophia James for Kate's Grove Ward. Um, councillor Jones, we've also just heard from, so uh, again, Councillor Khan. Councillor Gordon Good evening, good evening once again, Mr Mayor. Uh, Battle Hello. White Councillor Khan, Gordon Khan, Battle White Councillor, please. Very good. Councillor Mickey Lang. <clears throat> Mr Mayor, Mickey Lang, Councillor for Whitley Ward. Councillor uh, Joe Lovelock. Uh, good evening, Mr Mayor. Joe Lovelock, Councillor for Norcott Ward. Um, Councillor Mangini. Councillor Mangini, I saw you earlier. I'll come back to Councillor Mangini. Councillor Maskell. Um, Councillor Maskell um, for Battle Ward and also um, to Tony Jones. It's been a privilege <laughs> working you. with you. Um, and you'd better get some practice in, mate, because I'm practicing. <laughs> Good luck. See you soon. Um, Councillor McEwen. Ruth McEwen. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. It's Councillor Ruth McEwen from Church Ward, and I'm also chair of ACE Committee. Very good. Councillor McGonagall. Good evening, Mr Mayor. Uh, Brendan McGonagall, Councillor for Park Ward. Um, Councillor Emma McKennett, we didn't actually hear from you earlier, so just make sure you're there. I'm here. He's here. Thank you. With the um, Ward Councillor and Chair of Planning Applications Committee. Very good. Councillor Mary O'Connell. Um, evening, uh, Mary O'Connell, uh, Talhurst Ward. Councillor Page. 
Councillor Tony Page, Deputy Leader of the Council and Lead Councillor for Strategic Environment Planning and Transport. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening, Councillor Pearce. Evening, Mayor. Councillor Ashley Pearce, representing Church Ward and the Lead Member for Education. Thank you. Councillor Robinson, Simon Robinson. Good evening, Mr Mayor. I'm Councillor Simon Robinson, representing Peppard Ward. Um, Councillor Jenny Wren. Oh, good evening, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Jenny Wren for Kentwood Ward. Uh, apologies, jump one. Councillor Rowland, Karen Rowland. Good evening, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Karen Rowland, Abbey Ward and Lead Councillor for Culture, Heritage and Recreation. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Diapal Singh. Good evening, Mr Mayor. Diapal Singh, Councillor Kentwood Ward. Um, Councillor Raj Singh. Good evening, Mr Mayor. Councillor Raj Singh, Kentwood Ward. Okay, good. We heard from Councillor Skeets, Councillor Sulaki. Sakali, Sakali, sorry. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Ayesha Kale for Cavisham and Vice Chair Planning Applications Committee. Thank you very much. Councillor Stanford Beale. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, Councillor Stanford Beale, Peppard Ward, and Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Very good. Councillor Terry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Terry, uh, Minster Ward, Lead Member for Children's Services. Councillor White. Councillor Rob White. Good to start with you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Good evening, Councillor Rob White, Green Party Councillor for Park Ward and Group Leader. Very good. Councillor Josh Williams. Oh, I think you. Uh, um, <laughs> good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Josh Williams, Park Ward. Very good. Uh, Councillor Rose Williams. Good evening, Mr Mayor. Last but not least, <laughs> Councillor Rose Williams from uh, Cape Grove Ward. Yes, say the, 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 the back of the register. Councillor Woodward. Oh, yeah. Always. Oh, always, yeah. I'm sure you used to. <laughs> not quite last, Mr Mayor. Um, yeah. Good evening. Uh, Paul Woodward, uh, Councillor for Church Ward and Vice Chair Licensing. Thank you. Have I missed somebody? J uh, JW, Josh Williams, is that? No, it's Jamie Whitten. Uh, I beg your pardon, Jamie Whitten. I do apologise. So, missed you. So, yes, let's hear you. Thank, yeah. thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, and uh, you've missed me, Councillor Debs Edwards, Southcote Ward. Oh, God, crikey. How dare you? How dare you? I do, do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, I was, well, I was, I was focusing on the one we did miss, which was Councillor Mangini, who didn't answer. Um, so apologies. So, Councillor McGee, are you with us? I'm sure I saw you. Councillor Mangini, you're muted. Oh, Hi. great. Now, can you hear me? Yeah, we've got you. Jolly good. OK, yeah. councillors, thank you very much. And thank you for picking me up on my omissions there. Unprecedented. Um, so, item two, declarations of interest. I've not been in, uh, notified of any declarations of interest. Um, I'll now pause for a moment to allow any councillor to state if they have an interest and to declare the nature of that interest. No, okay, jolly good. So no indications, therefore I proceed to the next item of business, minutes of the previous meeting. Councillors, could you please confirm that the minutes are correct record of the meeting that we held on the 23rd of February, 2021? Um, Please just say agreed if you're happy with them. Agreed. 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 Really good. Agreed. OK, so minutes are approved. Item four, petitions. We have no petitions this evening. So then we move to questions from members of the public. I think there were four. I believe we've now got three questions this evening. Um, so first of all, very welcome to all members of the public for um, posing a question to us this evening. Um, Good to have you back again. It's as usual, you have the right to ask one supplementary question. However, the supplementary question must be used to clarify the answer you've been given in your original question. Uh, it's not an opportunity to ask another question unrelated to the reply from the lead councillor. So our first questioner is uh, Mr Andrew Hornsby Smith. And hopefully, Andrew, um, you've been given the instruction, but basically now press yes. star six. Yes, can you hear me? Can you we hear can me, hear Mr. Mayor? It's good. OK, we're in That's business. Right. OK, thank you very much. Uh, this, is a, this is a question to the Lead Councillor for Health, Wellbeing and Sport. Given the ravages of coronavirus on mental health and wellbeing, leading to a reported increase of 30% in cases of anxiety, depression and eating disorders in particular, as well as concerns about increased alcohol and drug misuse, 
How is the Council responding, together with health partners and the voluntary community sector, to address these alarming challenges and ensure provision of resources is appropriate? Very good. Okay, thank you. And can I ask, please, um, Councillor Hoskin to reply? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you for your question, Mr. Hornsby Smith, which uh, is a long answer, um, but it's a really important uh, question that you've asked about a really important subject. Um, so, your question quite rightly highlights the impact of the COVID pandemic on mental health and wellbeing. Rising to the challenges this brings is absolutely a priority for the Council within our plans for response to and recovery from COVID-19 and beyond, as well as drawing on national data sets such as Public, Public Health England's COVID-19 Mental Health and Wellbeing Surveillance Report. We're also working closely with local partners in health, the voluntary sector and the community sector and other agencies to identify and address emerging issues. There was an initial suppression of demand for children's and young people's mental health services locally following the first national lockdown, but later an increase in referrals and a greater severity for those presenting. Following the first national lockdown, all local providers of children and young people's mental health support originally moved to a digital or telephone offer of support. Many are now offering both online and some face-to-face -face services. In direct response to the COVID challenges, the NHS Clinical Commissioning Group, the CCG, with local council partners, has jointly commissioned the online youth counselling service, COOF. Work is continuing across Berkshire West Future in Mind Partnership to build a robust crisis offer for children and young people, strengthen the eating uh, disorder offer, uh, continue to tackle waiting times and meet the expected additional demand due to lockdown and COVID-19. The Reading Mental Health Support Team is performing well and showing first signs of its impact. The mental health triage is in place and has good feedback from service users. The primary mental health workers continue to have a long waiting list, but the teams are looking at what interventions can be offered for children and young people on those lists. Loneliness and social isolation have remained key issues of concern during lockdowns and ongoing social distancing restrictions. In recognition of the health risks associated with social isolation, a range of local services reached out during lockdown to existing users to offer some short wellbeing checks and links into more substantive social connection support. Many local groups increased capacity for befriending support during lockdown by diverting staff and volunteers from suspended face-to-face -face activities, by deploying new volunteers coming forward and by making use of additional capacity of existing volunteers in some cases. Befriending resources was also increased for groups where there were apparent gaps, for example, uh, young adults. The transition to virtual support has not suited everyone, however, and some people have suspended or declined offers of support in this way. There have been anecdotal reports that people being supported to reduce loneliness or isolation have experienced high levels of anxiety or other emotional problems since the onset of the pandemic. Reading Borough Council's wellbeing team, incorporating Compass Recovery College, has developed and delivered a range of courses to local befrienders to increase their knowledge, skills and confidence in supporting people with mental health needs and in supporting people to transition out of lockdown restrictions. This will involve developing confidence in physical and social skills in many cases. Ahead of the publication of nationally validated data, Reading along with other areas across the Thames Valley monitors suicide rates via a real time surveillance system based on police reports of deaths suspected to be by suicide. Comparator rates month by month have been tracked very closely since COVID-19 lockdown measures were put in place in England and cases are being checked for possible COVID links. To date, there has been no increase in the overall Berkshire rate since March 2020. However, the Berkshire Suicide Prevention Group is also monitoring fluctuations in rates for different sections of the community within the total. Partners remain vigilant and proactive in enhancing support around areas of heightened risk. Financial pressure is one such area which is particularly pertinent given the economic impacts of COVID. Reading Borough Council has adopted the National Samaritans Citizens Advice Council Tax Protocol to target mental wellbeing support for those in problem debt and put in place a range of additional measures to focus on supporting people to clear their debts. 
Funding is also being secured from Health Education England to deliver mental health first aid and suicide prevention first aid to frontline staff supporting people at points of financial difficulty, including job centre staff and third sector providers in Berkshire. With a history of mental health difficulties being another known risk factor, Reading's efforts to build people's resilience and coping skills have continued via the Compass Recovery College. Student enrolment with Compass has continued on an upward trend despite being slowed by COVID-19 and lockdown, which narrowed the range of opportunities for new enrolments. A wide range of courses have been adapted for virtual delivery, supplemented by outdoor wellbeing courses and social activities where these were allowed. Compass's activity has been increased by funding an additional recovery worker post on a 12 month trial basis. Our Commission Drug and Alcohol Hoskins, Support... I'm, I'm reminded that's about five minutes to complete your response. Have you got much more to say? Sorry, yeah, I haven't got too much more. I mean, it's covering a, a really important area of mental health. I don't disagree with that. So I, I do apologise for the length. I, I haven't actually added much to this. As a, as a council officer, I wanted to summarise what we were doing. Uh, so Commission Drug and Alcohol Provider Change, Grow, Live has continued to deliver services throughout the pandemic. Um, as a continue a virtual offer, but can you do face to face interventions where necessary? Um, a series of measures are in progress to deliver on the findings of the Mental Health Crisis Review 2019 and build system resilience to address the need for mental health support, which is exacerbated by the pandemic. Uh, and their procurement exercise is currently underway to secure a crisis cafe in Reading offer an alternative point of contact with support for people experiencing mental health crisis. Um, a public engagement exercise to inform new joint health and wellbeing strategies has recently been concluded, and this highlights the importance of local people placed on developing mental health resilience in the aftermath of COVID-19. Reading is a well-established mental health and wellbeing group chaired by a public health consultant, bringing together a range of partners across health, housing, drug and alcohol support, homeless provision, and other voluntary sector partners. And this group is well-placed to oversee further development of Reading's mental health and wellbeing support, which no doubt will continue to be a priority. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks very much, Councillor Hoskin. Um, Mr. Hoskin, do you have a uh, supplementary question? Yes, I do. First of all, I'd just like to say thank you for what is a very comprehensive reply. Thank you very much. And I think it's very welcome that the Council is supporting a range of schemes to meet mental health needs, along with the NHS and other partners, and that mental health is an absolute priority. I particularly welcome the additional recovery worker employed at the Compass Recovery College, the additional training provision and a decision to procure a crisis cafe venue. However, given that many charities will have experienced income falls during the pandemic, contingency plans and additional resources may be necessary to ensure that services such as Change, Grow, Live, number five, and the primary mental health uh, services do not experience even longer waiting lists than they currently experience. Can you confirm that such contingency plans are in place and that service users will not experience a deterioration in service provision. Kazalskin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I mean, I think the, the true answer is no, I can't confirm that there won't be problems in terms of demand against uh, the levels of support uh, available. Um, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, over you know 10 years, 11 years now of cuts to council budgets, plus uh, the and, and therefore the uh, reduce uh, monies available to support the uh, local voluntary sector together with the uh, ongoing underfunding of the National Health Service has meant that these services are already under strain uh, before uh, the current pandemic. What we will need to do is to be agile in our thinking and to think how we support everyone within the town, work in partnership in order to address these issues. We'll have to make the best with what we've got. And one of those ways will be really focusing on mental health, which I believe will be one of the ways that we do that through our new health and wellbeing strategy. And, and one of the things that's been coming about loud and clear from residents, from partners, from the voluntary sector, from people in, in statutory services, is that mental health and well-being is going to be an absolute priority for us in Reading and across Berkshire West to address in the coming years and decades. And we'll absolutely have that focus. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hoskin. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Thank you very sorry. And thank you, Andrew, for your questions. Yeah, question. Oh, questions. Second one. Um, quick. It's quick. And question is from Mr. Nicola Fudge. So, Mr. Fudge, do you have? Oh, sorry, have you pressed star six and uh, you able to speak? Hello. Is that Mr. Fudge? Hello. Can you hear Nick me? Nick Fudge. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Super. We can hear you. Yes. 
Okay. So, right, so ready, if you'd like to ask your question, please. Right, thank you. Uh, this is a question for the lead councillor for neighbourhoods and communities. Following the introduction of the new food waste bins and the rollout of the reduced size general waste bins, what are the short and long term costs and savings of both schemes per household? And do the council think uh, there would be an increase in fly tipping as a direct result of the smaller general waste bins? And if so, how will they address this? Thank you very much. Councillor Barnett Ward to respond. Uh, thank you, Chair, and I'd like to thank Mr Fudge for the question. I couldn't have asked for a more helpful question if it had been a Labour candidate asking it rather than a Conservative one. Um, the introduction of the new food waste collection service and the replacement of the 240 litre residual wheel bins with 140 litre wheel bins has been delivered and costed as a single project. As part of the Council's capital programme for 2020-21, which was agreed by full Council at the end of February, 1.489 million of capital expenditure budget was agreed to fund the new caddies and replacement residual waste bins. Despite the project being delayed by six months due to the pandemic, this planned capital expenditure has been spent in this financial year 2020-21. The net revenue saving for this project is estimated at £233,000 per annum. This takes into account the cost of borrowing and ongoing associated revenue costs. Excluding the cost of borrowing, the savings are £171,000 per annum in the first year, because that's a part year, and then £342,000 in a full year. This has been incorporated into the Council's medium term financial strategy. Financial savings, whilst very much needed following over a decade of central government cuts to local government funding, are not the only reason for introducing the new food waste service and reducing the amount of waste Reading sends to landfill. The council predicted that introducing food waste collections would increase Reading's recycling rate from 34% to 45%. And I'm delighted to be able to announce this evening that early results from the new service indicate that we have indeed reached that 45% target, which is a major achievement for Reading. It's a truly impressive improvement in the recycling rate. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Reading's residents, as well as our hardworking council officers in waste management for embracing this new service and making it a success. Reading's curbside food waste collection means that our town's excess food is now used to make fertiliser and generate electricity instead of rotting in landfill, releasing methane, a powerful greenhouse gas, into the atmosphere. This demonstrates the Council's commitment to delivering the actions set out in response to its climate emergency declaration in 2019. The Council's early adopter programme, which provided the 140 litre bins of food waste curbside collection to five areas across the borough from October last year, did not result in an increase in fly tipping as a direct result of in introducing the smaller residual waste bins. And to date, this has been the same for the main rollout. The Council has a recycling enforcement team who investigate fly tipping reports. The team will take the appropriate enforcement action against an individual or business if evidence is found during the course of the investigation. The council is committed to work hard to identify and prosecute those who commit these offences. Since the establishment of the team in November 2019, they've not only supported the food waste rollout and provided one-to-one -one support for households who are struggling to manage their waste, but they've also issued 518 fixed penalty notices for waste that's been dumped and successfully prosecuted 31 individuals in court in relation to waste offences and further court dates are set. <coughs> will not tolerate environmental crime as the residents of Reading should not have to put up with fly tipping in any circumstances. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Mike Ward. Um, Mr Fudge, do you have a supplementary question you want to ask? Um, no, there's no supplementary question. Thank you. That okay, so question. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for the response. Great, thank you very much indeed. That's good. So thank we you. go on to our next questioner. Um, and that is Mr Richard Stainforth. Um, so Richard, would you like to um, press star six, unmute yourself and uh, ask your question, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In January this year, in a speech to Parliament, the Education Secretary Gavin Williamson said, I would like to thank all of our teachers, all of our education staff and all our social workers for all they have been doing to keep children and young people safe and learning. And that is a sentiment I think that we would all agree with. However, in December, in a letter to the school teachers review body, Gavin Williamson said, it is right to temporarily pause pay awards for the majority of the public sector. I would ask the lead councillor for education to comment on which Gavin Williamson he prefers, the December Gavin Williamson or the January Gavin Williamson? 
Very good. Thank you for that. Um, Councillor Pierce. Is on. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. I thank Mr. Stainthorpe for his question and the chance to explain what has happened to teachers' pay under successive Conservative governments and leaders over the last decade. We have seen recently with regards to nurses' pay what this Conservative government really thinks of our dedicated public service workers who have worked so tirelessly to see this country through the biggest crisis in a generation. They were rewarded with a real terms pay cut, not even enough per week to cover the cost of parking at the hospital where they do their jobs. Similarly, the Department for Education admitted last year that teachers are over £4,000 a year worse off in real terms since 2010, or a cut of 10%. For those just starting out their teaching careers, those on M1, this means they are £209 a month worse off. For those more experienced teachers but still in the classroom, those on UPS3, they are £537 a month worse off. It seems it doesn't matter whom the Tory leader is, the impact on teachers' pay is the same. Cut, cut and cut some more. The Conservative government plan to thank school staff for all of their work this year to cut the pay for the majority of teachers. But there are a lucky 6,400 teachers nationally who may receive the princely sum of £250 added to their annual salary. Not such good news for school leaders and bursars as the additional 2.2 million cost of this is affordable from current budgets, according to the DfE. It may be affordable if you're one of Matt Hancock's mates or Dominic Cummings, but for schools with incredibly tight budgets, not so much. False gratitude and hollow platitudes have been a hallmark of this government throughout the last decade and especially over the last year. Claps and thanks don't pay teachers bills and they will not help recruit the next generation of teachers to the profession. It is teachers like so many of our other key workers and public servants who have kept this country going over the last year and they're being repaid by this government with a further pay cut. So in answer to the question which version of Gavin Williamson I prefer, it is the Gavin Williamson who is nowhere near the education department. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, Mr Stainthorpe, do you have a supplementary you wish to ask? Uh, thank you Mr Mayor. Apart from thanking Councillor Pearce for pointing out the contradiction as so often between what the Conservatives in power say and what they actually do, I have no supplementary question. OK, thank you very much for that. Um, no, I, perhaps officers might correct me here, but I think the fourth question has been withdrawn. If not, can we uh, move to that? That's um, correct, any officers going to comment? Yes, that's correct, Mr. Mayor. It's been withdrawn. I thought so. OK, thank you very much then. So we've uh, completed then our three questions from members of the public. Um, so item six on our agenda is questions from councillors. And I have to say, most unusually, we have no questions from councillors this evening. So we move to item seven, um, and that's the first of our reports. Um, and item seven is um, the Reading Borough Council's corporate plan. Um, I will ask Councillor Brock to speak and move the motion on the recommendations to set out of the report. Um, before I do, I have a, I have a request from Mr. Uh, Councillor Brock sorry, to say a few words about our Deputy Director of Planning and Transport and Regulatory Services, uh, Mr. George Famalico, who's leaving the Council at the end of the month. Councillor Brock. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for your permission to, to say a few words about Mr. Fremalico. Um, so, so George Fremalico joined Reading Borough Council in June 2014 as our Head of Planning and Development and Regulatory Services. And then in April of 2019, he was appointed Assistant Director of Planning, Transport and Regulatory Services. And then in September of the same year, became the Deputy Director. Um, and I have to say, you know, Mr. Premalika has, has been uh, incredibly hardworking in his time here. Most recently, he's been absolutely integral to us getting uh, the bid for Reading Jail into the Ministry of Justice. But he's led teams working on such a broad array of, of work across the council that I, I couldn't possibly capture it all. I think Councillor Page may have a few more words later on this evening. Um, but he's been involved in major transport schemes in Green Park Station, in the redevelopment of Reading Station. Uh, we're starting to see the work around Station Hill begin to come to fruition. 
Thames Towers complete refurbishment, of course. Um, his executive director, Francis Martin, points out to me that uh, Mr. Premalik has always been fantastic at navigating his way through governance, uh, which is no mean feat at all. From my perspective, I've always found uh, Mr. Framlico to be an especially innovative and straightforward officer, always providing me and colleagues with very clear advice. And more than anything else, where I think he absolutely shines is that he is a fantastic first class problem solver. Um, certainly one of the best, perhaps the best we have around the council. And certainly I shall miss him greatly. And I hope uh, when he gets bored of working in a podunk district council, he'll apply for another job higher up the chain back at Reading and we may be able to welcome him back. But I should say I've only I've only ever known him make uh, one mistake really in his time here. I thought it was worth capturing this. That is to say he set a photo of himself on his Outlook account in which he was sort of staring off into the mid distance and showing off his impressively sculpted biceps. Now, why was this a mistake? Well, simply because Councillor Page won't shut up about this photograph, which I suppose <laughs> comes, from a, comes from a place of jealousy, maybe. But um, it certainly has given us uh, cause for amusement over the past. This must have been about 12 or 18 months ago. Um, but so, no, and, and, and even, even the teasing that, that both uh, Councillor Page and I have delivered uh, upon Mr. Framalico around that, uh, George has always taken in very good humour. So, I shall certainly miss that side of him as well. But thank you uh, to Mr. Framalico for all of the work he's done in his uh, six years here now, more than six years here now. Um, and uh, I, I certainly hope he has a, a very uh, fantastic career in the future, wherever it may take him. And I'm sure it will continue to take him up. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is it OK if I move on to the agenda item? Please do. So now we start um, your actual substantive item, yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, bringing forward tonight, we see a revision of the council's corporate plan. And I think it's the right time to begin a review of this. And this is in some ways tonight a prelude to a much more uh, holistic evaluation that will be taking place over the forthcoming year. Clearly, the priorities of the council have had to change because of the pandemic. Uh, and clearly the challenges that the council faces have changed because of the pandemic we face as well. There's an awful lot of uncertainty in the months to come, and indeed there may well be an awful lot of uh, uncertainty in the years to come as well. So what we present tonight is a, a one year stopgap corporate plan, if you will, pending that more comprehensive review over the forthcoming 12 months that I mentioned. So what do we have here? Well, we have the enshrinement of our commitment to sustainability, and that is sustainability that is both social, economic and environmental, a commitment to a healthy environment and work to address the climate crisis, a commitment to tackling inequality around our town and especially the direct effects of the pandemic, and a commitment to building a more inclusive economy with better opportunities for those who haven't always felt the direct benefit or even sometimes the indirect benefit of Reading's economic growth and vibrancy. Uh, presented, of course, alongside trackable metrics and a series of very tough goals, aspirational goals, but it's right that we should be aspirational. It's right that we should seek to hold ourselves to high standards and accept that we may not always hit that which we strive to achieve. But it's important that we always try to do the very best that we can by residents across Reading. So there's an awful lot of exciting work to be done. Uh, and I move the motion as printed, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Brock. Um, Councillor Page is going to second, but has reserved his right. So yeah. our next speaker is Councillor Ashley Pearce. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to welcome this plan and highlight like some of our plans for education over the next few years. Uh, the response to the COVID crisis locally from Brighter Futures for Children and our schools has been magnificent. From schools remaining open for key workers and vulnerable children, organising the delivery of laptops, the local voucher scheme for free school meals, remote learning, and in the past couple of weeks, a testing system all set up without fuss and to an expert level. 
We've trusted in our heads at every, and at every step of the way they have delivered. Education has always been about partnerships and this year everyone has pulled together more than ever. In this plan, we continue to invest in education, young people and our future. We have a new youth hub at the Curious Lounge where advice on careers, university and apprenticeships can be found. Our adult learners continue to be helped by new directions who yesterday secured kickstart funding for over 100 new jobs. The new River Academy um, mentioned by Councillor Jones earlier on Richfield Avenue continues to progress and will increase our secondary school capacity. Building work at the Hamilton School uh, is already there and taking place. It's uh, if you haven't seen it, you can go online, have a look. There's a very impressive video on there. This will provide far more suitable accommodation than the old site on Christchurch Road. We have another new school developing, the Oak Tree School, which will soon go to the planning committee stage and that will help in increasing capacity for our young people with additional needs. This is alongside our trauma informed approach in all of our schools, a refresh of our SEN strategy and a new and ambitious plan and vision for all of the borough's schools later this year. These are collaborative schools led plans to make education in Reading the best it can be and to give all young people in Reading the start they deserve. And I think this plan goes a long way to saying what we're going to do with that. Um, thank you, Councillor Pearce. Very good. Um, so next up is Councillor Rob White. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Green councillors want people and planet put first in the council's corporate plan. The plan should be focused on a green jobs led recovery from the pandemic. As you would expect, we support some of the proposals, but we also have concerns about others. It's good to see the rough sleeping target included in the plan. This area needs continued focus. People who are sleeping rough are some of our most vulnerable residents and we need to give them this, the support they deserve. It's also good to see insulating houses in the plan, but as we've said before, this area needs proper resourcing if we are going to help the 6,000 Reading households currently living in fuel poverty. None of our residents should be having to choose between heating and eating. As Green councillors have said before, we don't support the outsourcing of leisure, which is measured in the which is mentioned in the corporate plan. We don't think this is the best way to improve residents' health. On balance, though, we will support this one year corporate plan. We need to do our best as councillors to pull together in these tough times. But please don't take this to mean that we support everything in it. We will continue to hold the council to account to get the best for residents. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Um, Councillor Ricky Devine. Thank you, Chair. Um, first, I'm not quite sure why we have this debate on the corporate plan because it really echoes the debate we had in the last council meeting on the budget itself, because the budget and the corporate plan are actually so intertwined that the second debate is unlikely to prove any more fruitful. Having said that, it does actually uh, set out the, the administration's path for the coming year. Um, we know already that the Council's climate strategy involves retrofitting older housing stock to reduce carbon footprints. But sadly, they could not find the 40 or 50,000 pounds to engage an officer to work on private landlords to improve the insulation of their properties and reduce fuel poverty, despite this being a key cause of high carbon usage. The local transport plan details omit any mention of demand management and any attempt to improve air quality town in the town centre for residents anytime soon and thus condemning them to future health problems, uh, which uh, the NHS I'm sure will be entirely thankful. The appendix to the corporate plan also fails to mention tree planting, which should be another key plank of the climate strategy. And no, they couldn't find the odd hundred or two hundred thousand pounds to boost tree planting in Reading. The administration did, however, find £150,000 to fund a new deputy chief exec post and to backfill it with a chief finance officer post. Isn't it amazing how they find money when they need it? And for instance, if they need to get £1 million together to get the accounts sorted, no problem. Need a second camera van? No problem. 
The issue of finance is always raised by Labour leadership in budget debates and the need to balance budgets and, con and contrast their responsible plans with the spendthrift ideas floated by opposition parties, no matter how sane and sensible they are. So no, we will not be supporting the Labour budget and no, we, we sorry, we did not support the Labour budget and we shall not be supporting the corporate plan before us this evening. And oh, I can't wait to hear the further pearls of wisdom from Councillor Page. I'm sure he won't disappoint. Thank, Thank you. you. I think it's time for the Deputy Mayor to stand in. Uh, you've lost me. Wait. No, you're back with us, Mr. Mayor. Any clue what's happening? Right, so I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Mr. Mayor. OK, that's good. So I'm trying to get hold of Councillor Karen Rowland. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Let me just hit my yes. Thank, thank you very much. Um, I would like to use this opportunity, if I could, to applaud uh, this corporate plan uh, in our stopgap year before we look uh, to go forward and uh, how well developed and extremely professional it is this year and how very carefully and genuinely it sets out the council's interest in helping Reading to recover from the past year's pandemic crisis. I, I do hope uh, my colleagues will also go on about some of the other benefits and and really wonderful items that we have in the corporate in, in the corporate plan this year. But in line with my portfolio that oversees culture, heritage, and recreation, I would like to note that amongst the three major themes of healthy environment, a thriving community, and an inclusive econ economy, that I'm pleased to note that we have highlighted the importance of our common cultural heritage strengths in Reading and their ability to enhance our tourist industry and create an amazing place for people to enjoy. And that is highlighted as one of our major methods to go about recovery over the next year. To me, I see this as a significant turning point in the strategy this year and one I want to see continue. As I see it recognizing the value of our wonderfully culturally diverse communities and recognizing the value of our significant built heritage in the town and that these assets can support the strengthening of our burgeoning regional tourist economy in this town with aspirations certainly from Reading UK and the town centre bids to launch the proud name of Reading even further afield in the years ahead. Post Brexit, the soft powers that the UK has on the global stage are more important than ever. Our soft powers rank us in the top three countries in the world. This is important for Reading's future economy and we need to continue to ensure that we play our fair part and reap those benefits too. One of the UK's top soft power remains this cult country's cultural recognition. I say this as an American, but you will probably recall and understand your educational strengths, this country's government, Harry Potter, the royal family, our beautiful towns and villages all play their part in that appeal. Tourism is and will be a top draw for the economy as Britain steadies its ship for the future. Reading stands to benefit and we are ready to do so. I say so because I feel like on some level we need to be using as I what we said when I was a child, using what God gave us and what what we have in this town is our wonderful cultural aspects, our wonderful heritage, and we can utilize that to propel our economy forward, to create opportunities of employment for everyone across the town, to strengthen and support our cultural and hospitality sectors as they recover and encourage students into future exciting new careers and to benefit everyone's better mental health and well-being when they engage in our diverse cultural offerings. I'm delighted that this incredible asset is being highlighted as a key element to the recovery that we need to achieve here in Reading over the next year and that this corporate plan lays that out very beautifully. I'm delighted to endorse it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Councillor Rowland. Um, next up is Councillor John Innes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know if you can see me. 
apologise for my lockdown haircut, but that's looking forward to that. Um, um, thank you. Behind you. <laughs> Halo right, effect. Uh, let me turn the light off. See him in the dark. Um, that's no good either. Oh, wasting my time. I do apologise. Uh, I think it's important to recognise the difficulties of the uh, of the years that we face a year uh, of COVID and how the council's acting, uh, and also to look forward. I don't think it is a it's a waste of time uh, refreshing the corporate plan. That's almost to um, disrespect in many ways the hard work that officers of this council uh, has put in over the past year and is putting in for the coming period. Um, I think it's has got to be given the respect it deserves and the efforts that are going in. I mean, you know, have a go at politicians by all means, but maybe think before you try and disrespect the corporate plan of the work that the staff are putting into it. And I think that's why it's important to recognise this and thank the housing team, because on pages six and seven, I think it's number 40, on 41, but also I've got six and seven on the appendix, the full list of the work, the widespread intervention that the housing team at Reading Borough will be doing, has done and will be doing. Uh, the first thing is to list the council houses proposals that are going ahead, uh, which is going to help homeless people who are currently homeless, people who are uh, vulnerable, and adult social care as well, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an excellent intervention which is ambitious, which we will be very much confident in uh, completion. Uh, you can list of the the homes there, and the final phase of Hexham, the improvements to Wensley Road, the work on current council houses. We're we're a council that are proud to build council houses there's not many councils that can say that we're, we're definitely proud we think affordable housing is the ultimate key into ensuring that our residents are ready are able to afford decent accommodation i think the challenge one of the challenges would be to ensure that we keep residents on board with the house building projects to get the buy-in and support uh, and win the hearts and minds for all the projects but I'll tell you what else would be interesting, would see Green councillors to stop apologising for Tory government inaction on green energy projects and also to stop opposing zero carbon green energy council housing. That would be an interesting year ahead. Uh, moving on to the private sector, uh, there is the mandatory HMO licensing, which is included an increased percentage of houses of multiple occupation licenses, which will improve the efficiency and energy of those uh, houses, getting landlords to work with us to pay themselves to ensure their properties are brought up to scratch is important. Uh, we'll be working with them and also improving for renters. The affordable rents uh, cap, uh, I would use the word cap, although I, I'm probably one of the animals that do use that, but I think the affordable housing 80% is something that we're pushing forward in the coming period, uh, working with planning development. Um, but also an important one of 100% of tall buildings as defined by the government to make sure that all residents in Reading and high rises are safe. I think finally to talk about homelessness. Homelessness has been an absolute um, real risk over the past few years, particularly in the last year of COVID and the work that's been done uh, in Reading, the amount of money that's been invested and the hard work that's been done across agencies and volunteers as well to ensure that anybody that wants a place gets a place and that will continue as much as possible. And we're investing 2.3 million into 40 homes of which will include intensive support with uh, individuals who've had a history of rough sleeping you know, the figures there as well to show the success in getting people, the intervention of over 440 of our residents' intervention, getting them into long-term uh, accommodation <coughs> and, and the 30 million to improve adult social care support and packaging in housing as well. So you can see there is a, a massive, massive effort and a massive investment uh, going in 
to housing in Reading and long may it continue. And I will finish and say it's going to be a challenging year. We know that. But what we do know is that we're confident as a council and we're confident as a party ourselves in the Labour Party that we will make sure we put Reading residents first and we put our vulnerable residents first in support and housing will show that. And I'm looking forward to working in the council in the coming year to ensure that we can achieve the aims and objectives of the corporate plan. Thank you ever so much, Mr Mayor. Um, thank you, Councillor Ness. Um, so next up is Councillor Jet Skeets. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, well, it, it's right that we should refresh our corporate plan. I agree with Councillor Ennis entirely. What uh, is appropriate is ever changing. So what is, is, is a corporate plan for one year? And, and, and Councillor Ennis, you highlighted the pandemic. It's right that we do refresh uh, the corporate plan. Um, and I can say to you that uh, having gone through the plan overall, I think it's, it's a good plan. So we shall be supporting it this evening. I like the idea that uh, you're working together with businesses because businesses, of course, have suffered um, tremendously during this pandemic. Um, I also agree with the comments Councillor Rowland made uh, on her pride of Reading. Equally, um, we con the Conservatives are proud of Reading. Um, I certainly am. I've lived here for uh, over 40 years and uh, so uh, I, I always think it's a great place to live personally. And so, um, but the plan itself, I think is, is overall, it looks very good. And as I said just a moment ago, we shall be supporting it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Skeets. So we're moving to the second now. Um, so, Councillor Tony Page. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, can I um, thank colleagues for their support? Um, thank Councillor White for his uh, remarks. I would make the point to everybody uh, that uh, clearly many of the targets in this document will have to be refreshed and reviewed and kept under annual. Uh, review and as Councillor Brock rightly said this is a holding um, exercise and clearly even more so than in previous years as we emerge from the pandemic with all the new and old uncertainties um, there will be a challenge in bringing forward a plan uh, that has sufficiently challenging but realistic targets and that brings me on to some of uh, Councillor Duveen's predictably curmudgeonly and recycled budget speech notes. Uh, the fact is, Councillor uh, Duveen, that we have paused the local transport plan precisely because of the reasons that I just mentioned. Targets, particularly in the transport and environmental field, are very uh, challenging at the present time. And as we emerge from the pandemic, so too will we be bringing forward later this year um, a new local transport plan that will address demand management um, and air quality. And these, this is referenced on page 38 um, of our papers. And it's made quite clear that the LTP uh, is poised, ready to be um, brought forward. Um, I thank Councillor Skeets for her positive uh, uh, remarks. Um, and then just bring me on, uh, Chair, just to conclude um, in also placing on record my thanks to uh, George Framalico. Um, I chaired the panel that appointed George uh, some years ago. And uh, as with uh, many appointments that I've made over the years, I'm particularly pleased with the way uh, that uh, appointment uh, panned out. Uh, George is exceptionally hard working. Um, it's quite common to receive an email from him um, that's timed around 6.30 or 6.45 and that's in the morning and quite uh, common to receive um, emails later um, at night um, as well. Uh, he has formidable tenacity um, and uh, he has a consummate ability to brief members in terms that they uh, can understand um, and uh, he also writes exceptionally good uh, committee reports um, and uh, uh, we will sadly uh, miss his services. Um, Councillor Brock referred to the photo 
um, earlier, I had to be very restrained because I certainly didn't want to be on the receiving end of a, uh, a sexual harassment complaint. It's bad enough dealing with complaints from members of the public, while one certainly doesn't want to be responsible for any complaints um, internally. Um, and I would say to George that uh, I shall genuinely miss him and our full and often frank discussions um, behind the scenes. Um, he's been involved with many complicated projects on the uh, planning and transport uh, uh, front, um, but uh, has always been able to cut through to the key issues and steer not only members, but also um, the other uh, professional officers um, in the council, who I know will miss um, his candour and wisdom. So um, our loss is very much Woking's gain. I won't be quite so insulting about the um, authority to which he's going that Councillor Brock referred to, but um, I would say to George that when he's had a bit of a rest in Woking, um, if he wants to reapply for jobs in Reading in the future, we will certainly give him um, a very good hearing and I wish him well um, for the forthcoming years. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I second. Thank you very much, Councillor Page. So, Councillor Brock, would you like now to sum up and then put the motion, please? Thank you, Mr Mayor. I should stress, of course, my tongue firmly in my cheek uh, in my comments about Woking. It has a, a delightful statue um, to the tripods from HG World's War of the Worlds, if, if nothing else. Um, so a, a, a good debate. I'm, I'm pleased to have cross-party support. Disappointed, of course, in Councillor Devine's comments. Um, I, I often think Councillor Devine only has sort of free speeches, really, and, and sort of spins the wheel of fortune to see what we end up with. But once again, he insists on portraying the idea that, that presenting simple back of the envelope calculations is somehow a responsible way to budget uh, for a council. And I think sort of belying this is the point he makes about, you know, an odd £150,000 here or an odd £50,000 there. It's simply not the way in which we should conduct our business as a council. Um, but I am pleased to, to see, you know, support from, from Councillor Skeets and from uh, Councillor White. And of course, I entirely appreciate, as Councillor White said, that supporting the corporate plan tonight does not have to mean that that the opposition groups agree with everything that is within it. Um, and clearly we will have an ongoing debate through the year and beyond as we always do. But it's good to see that maturity of approach and the ability that we can, we can all bring ourselves together when it's about setting the right strategic direction for Reading. So very, uh, very pleased to have that and uh, suggest we proceed to the vote, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Brock. And once again, helpfully, we've had um, speakers from all four groups, so we have an indication of how the groups would like to vote. Um, and so on that basis, I once again do it by acclamation. So could all those please in favour of the motion, please now say agreed. Agreed. And those against? Against. Against. That's great. So if, once again, that's that's really helpful. So two Lib Dems against and the rest. <coughs> so I think the motion is carried. Um, so I note that it's now 10 to 8. So we'll carry on with the agenda. And as I say, I'll be stopping in 10 minutes. Um, so item 8 on the agenda is pages 55 to 65, Councillor's Allowance. Councillor Brock, I think you'll introduce the report. Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just to, to lead off with thanking the remuneration panel once again for their work. So some minor changes proposed, all of which uh, we support. Particularly pleased to see recognition for the work that goes into councillors or the work that councillors sitting on the foster panel have to put in. Um, and I think it, it's, it's very important work, actually. And I, I recall and, and forgot to pay tribute to it at the last council meeting, uh, Councillor Robinson talking about the important work of fostering here in <laughs> Reading. Uh, also, we also support the decision to not award an SRA for Planning Applications Committee and the Licensing Applications Committee. Uh, the suggestion that the panel should review this idea came from councillors across the political divide, right that the panel should look at it and come to the conclusion 
that they have. I know, of course, that this would have primarily have benefited opposition councillors in any case, and I haven't had any personal representation from them uh, that they oppose the proposal before us tonight. So I assume that they agree with that outcome as well. Uh, so nothing more for me to say, uh, really, Mr Mayor, and I move the motion as printed. Thank you, Councillor Brock. Um, Councillor Page once again has indicated that he will reserve his right and speak towards the end. So um, uh, we're first up is Councillor Ricky Devine. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. I uh, just want to say we'll happily support the allowances scheme as set out, uh, keeping the allowances essentially the same as last year with uh, the minor uh, uh, amendments that we, uh, the, uh, the leader spoke about. Um, so, yeah, we're happy to support this one. Thank you, Councillor Levine. Um, Councillor Debed Edwards, who I know is here this evening. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, just very briefly, um, I am absolutely delighted um, that uh, the panel decided that we would need another councillor to sit on the fostering panel. Uh, this really is a really important role. I have worked on there for since about 2007 and um, having more councillor influence. Remember, we're all, we're all corporate parents would be absolutely delightful. And um, so Please, any volunteers, I am happy to mentor you. Please put yourselves forward. And thank you very much, panel, for making that decision. Councillor Edwards, um, Councillor Jeanette Skeets. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Well, we too um, will be supporting this this evening, uh, the recommended action. Um, and uh, also we, we support the decision made by the panel not to give um, an SR um, egg um, tier four or just below to the uh, planning and licensing committee members. And it's right and proper that uh, the um, there is a, a um, an increase, uh, sorry, an SRA for the um, adoption and fostering panel. So we fully support it um, as there is not going to be um, an increase. It is a difficult time, Mr Mayor, for a lot of people in this town. So I think this sends out the right message um, because there is a lot of hardship out there. And, and I think um, by, by not increasing this year, it does send out the right message to uh, everyone in the borough. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Skates, um, so nobody else is indicating, so I think we move to Councillor Page, please. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I just wanted to place on record, I think, all our collective thanks as well to the panel. Um, as you will recollect, a few years ago, the panel um, was in a pretty moribund uh, state. Um, the council bit the uh, bullet, uh, or grasped the nettle, whatever metaphor you want to uh, use around the issue of members allowances and this present panel was uh, appointed um, three of them quite new Linda Fort, Mick Pollock and uh, uh, Lady Durant um, and uh, all four have done a sterling service. Um, they do this in an unpaid uh, capacity it's worth emphasizing uh, that um, and I hope, uh, Chair, we will ensure that an appropriate letter of thanks, um, sorry, Mr Mayor, I hope that an appropriate letter of thanks um, will go to them um, for the work that they've done, not only recently, but obviously um, over the last uh, few years. So I, I second, Chair, thank you. Miss, Mr Mayor, my apologies. <laughs> yeah, we will get there. But thank you, Councillor Page, and certainly we must make sure that exactly that, that they, they receive letters I'm, I'm very happy to sign them if it's for me to do. Otherwise, I guess the chairman of the right committee. So with that, I think we revert back to Councillor Brock, please to sum up and put the motion. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, nothing to add from me. Uh, uh, pleased to hear cross party support again and suggest we proceed to the vote. OK, so once again, very helpful you've had to speak. I think we actually haven't heard anybody in the Greens, but um, we've heard everybody else. Um, so again, I get the sense of where we are with uh, support or opposition for the motion. So all those in favour of the motion, please uh, say they agree now. Agreed. 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 Anybody against the motion? 
so unanimously carried. So thank you very much for that. Right, so by the various clocks that I have, depending on which one we look at, it's either sort of um, 7.56 or 55. What I suggest we do, rather than moving on to the next item and then having to interrupt it, I think what we'll do is we'll pause now. Um, people can then go out and say, light the candle, torch, whatever they wish. And as the, the slide says, we'll resume again at 8.05. So we'll resume again in about nine to 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor.
Okay, so I make it to uh, eight oh five by my clock. Anybody else with me? Yes, yeah, same, uh, same for me, uh, Mr. Mayor. Agree. We're Edwards. back. Okay, yeah. pretty good. Right, picture of Reading Borough Council. Okay, so I think um, that's it. Exactly, a bit enthusiastic there, um, officers. Next item up is item nine, um, which is the pay policy statement. Um, so uh, pages 67 to 92 of your papers, pay policy statement. Once again, Councillor Brock, I think, is going to introduce the item. Councillor Brock. He's just, he's just coming, Mr. Mayor. Good. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, I, I caught it caught up in the moment. Um, uh, uh, item nine, um, the pay policy statement uh, usually would be moved by Councillor Emerson, but of course she's had to send her apology this evening. Um, it's it's a well, it, it's one of those things that comes to council because it has to come to council that has gone through and been approved by the personnel committee. Uh, and as obviously uh, the, our trade union colleagues are aware and have been through the document as well. And uh, it's brought here for council's formal approval and I move the motion is printed. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Page, you are going to second and you're going to reserve your right. Um, nobody else is at this stage indicating. I will just pause for a moment or two. Okay. Anybody else wants to speak, so Councillor Page. I would just say agreed, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Thank so you. that's seconded. I guess Councillor Brock, you need to, need to say anything else or not? No, no nothing to add, Mr. Mayor. So once again, um, the motion's put, and uh, all those in favour, please say aye. Agreed. 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 So that the motion is carried. So that's item nine. Um, there's a little 9A which has slipped in, which is the designation of Section 151 officer and changes to Article 12 of the Constitution. Um, once again, Councillor Brock. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Again, has been through personnel committee and an appointment has been made for a new Director of Finance, which I'm very pleased about, and they start uh, next week, I believe. Um, and of course, Council is required to designate the Section 151 officer 
formally uh, and so it brings uh, this report simply brings that forward alongside uh, supplementary changes to Article 12 of the, con uh, the Constitution, uh, changing around some of the titles used in the Constitution. Uh, so I move as printed, Mr Mayor. Um, thank you very much, Councillor Brock. And certainly I joined you on that committee and uh, selected the new Section 1151 officer. So very pleased to see him joining us. Councillor Page. I beg your pardon, what about Councillor Devine first? Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, well, this is basically a foregone conclusion. Uh, we're not voting on something that may or may not happen. It's already happened. Um, we have actually opposed it, as you've probably heard in my speech before, and we'll carry on opposing it. Um, but uh, I understand that it's, it's a done deal, basically. OK, um, thank you for that. Um, I don't think anybody else is indicating, so which case, Councillor Page, please. I'll let Councillor Brock deal with it in his closing remarks, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So Councillor Brock, um, for you to close and then put the motion. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I think Councillor Devine may operate under some misapprehension. I mean, matters pertaining to the appointment of staff and the designation of staff and so on and so forth is properly the responsibility of the personnel committee on which the Lib Dems do not sit. Um, however, of course, the constitutional changes uh, where required come through council and there's an opportunity to make representation there. I should point out in relation to comments Councillor Devine made earlier tonight, that we haven't created a new role uh, on £150,000 per year because uh, the, the executive director of resources role um, transforms into the deputy chief executive. So Councillor Devine is out by £135,645 in his assessment because the change in salary for all of the additional responsibility that comes with being deputy chief executive is £14,335. Of course, uh, he would know that if he had read through the report that went to the personnel committee. Um, so nothing further to add, Mr Mayor, and again suggest we proceed to the vote. Thank you very much, Councillor Brock. So once again, the motion's put. All those in favour, please say aye or agreed. 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 Aye. Aye. Those against? Against. Uh, I, I would say two against, the rest in favour. OK, so the motion is carried. And then finally, we move to the motion, um, one motion this evening to be proposed by Councillor Hoskin, regarding the security staff at the Royal Berkshire Hospital. Councillor Hoskin. Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor, um, uh, 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 and thank you. Um, it gives, it's an honour actually to introduce this motion. Um, I'm not going to repeat, uh, there's a, it's a very comprehensive motion that I was going to you know, support to, to write there, and I think it explains the situation very well. It explains uh, uh, what I believe um, demonstrates our, our council values in terms of uh, fair reward and, and good employment and talks about what the council should do uh, about that. Um, I'd like to just make a, a few just a short points. The first one is that, um, you know, this is, you know, we, we just uh, had a moment to reflect on the, you know, the terrible loss um, to our country uh, from the COVID pandemic. Uh, and what we're talking about here our group of staff who were very much on the front line uh, during, uh, you know, the, the very peaks of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the the outbreak and the waves. And whilst the Royal Berkshire Hospital was under terrible strain, um, the security uh, people were very much there on the front line, putting themselves in, in harm's way um, and, uh, you know, potential sickness in order to uh, look after staff, look after the hospital and to look after patients. Um, and, you know, as is outlined within the motion, um, I believe that uh, these staff have been uh, poorly treated by their employer, Kingdom Security. I think they have a very fair uh, demand, not an unreasonable demand in terms of uh, a fair uh, increase in fair pay. Um, and that's been rebuffed. And, you know, I've, I've been a, a senior shop steward and have organised uh, strike action and picketing. Um, and it's it's something that staff really come to extremely reluctantly they sacrifice their pay they don't turn up to do the job that they 
know is really important. Um, and it's something that staff are only pushed to in extreme circumstances. And these security people have found themselves, the security staff at the Robarch Hospital have found themselves in that situation. So I'm I'm asking that we uh, support them as a, as a council. And I think it's, I'm particularly requesting that we all do so. Uh, what I'm looking for tonight is a really strong statement uh, from uh, us as a council uh, in terms of uh, that we support these security staff with their very uh, reasonable offer. Uh, uh, sorry, a very reasonable uh, pay demand and, and, and hope that will be met. Um, I have to unfortunately uh, update that the uh, ACAS talks that are referred to in this motion are not progressing as, as, as we would hope um, and it uh, looks like there may be uh, further balloting for further um, strike action. The staff that I've spoken to are absolutely committed to uh, getting their fair uh, settlement and are uh, determined to see that. So uh, what we're asking is as a council, and I think what's perhaps the most important element is the um, speaking to the Royal Barks Hospital. I think for me personally, uh, I really want to see the Royal Barks Hospital to, uh, you know, to, to actually, you know, it's to step up to the plate on this. Uh, yes, it's an outsourced uh, security operation, um, but these are staff that work for them, that protect them, that that, that, that are essential uh, to, to what they do. And of course, the, the strike action is affecting uh, the services that the, the company uh, Kingdom Security should be providing. So I really, uh, you know, I think perhaps the most important element within this motion is our request to the Royal Berkshire Hospital to use its influence uh, as, as far as it is you know, possible for it to do so, to seek a uh, resolution to the dispute, uh, to end the dispute. Uh, and actually, I think, you know, with the uh, disruption to the contract that's been provided to to see what can be done in terms of bringing uh, the security staff uh, in house, um, because actually, you know, you know, this is a service that needs to be provided. So I'm hoping very much that we get unanimous support for this. I think it'll be a really good and strong message. One to uh, the Kingdom Security that actually need to reflect upon their treatment of you know these people who, as I say, are amongst the heroes uh, of the COVID pandemic. Uh, a really strong message to the Royal Berkshire Hospital NHS Trust to uh, look to themselves in terms of their role as the ultimate, um, you know, ultimately uh, are responsible for the service and for the security of the hospital. Um, and, and also uh, a really strong message to the uh, security staff uh, themselves, which says that this council uh, is on their, support, on their side and supports them in their fair um, demand for a fair wage and uh, hopes that this uh, is resolved. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I say now I move this motion. Thank you. Uh, no, you don't actually move it at this moment, but we move it later. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Put it. So, um, uh, Councillor Hossel, do you have a second of your motion? Uh, yes, Councillor Eden. Councillor Eden, okay. So Councillor Eden, do you want to speak, speak now or um, speak later? Thank you, Chair. I wish to reserve my right to speak. Reserve your right. Okay, so next up is Councillor Hacker. Councillor Hacker. Thank you, Chair. Um, I obviously really do support this motion. I'm pleased my colleague, um, both in the Council and formerly uh, my trade union colleague with Unite, um, Councillor Hoskin, is bringing this motion to Council today. I think we need to look at the very basic facts of what we're looking for here. We're not looking at a um, group of staff members who are asking for something unreasonable. They're not asking for luxury holidays to the Caribbean. They're not asking for tens of thousands of pounds extra pay. And they're not asking for enough money to buy a luxury yacht. They're asking for something very basic. And that is enough money to be able to afford to live in Reading with their families. And in some cases get sick pay, which some of the colleagues at Kingdom don't receive. And during the pandemic, it's been clearly shown how difficult it is for people to make those decisions between taking the time off they need to recover if they're sick, but also on the other hand, bringing food in to feed their families and pay their mortgages or rent. No. Um, it's just a few pounds an hour that they're asking for. It's not much. They're frontline workers who've worked in the hospital throughout the entire of the COVID crisis, making sure that our hospitals are safe. So yes, Royal Berkshire Hospital should stand, step up and look to their contracts and say, you know what, if you're going to work for us, we're going to ensure that our contracts mean that our workers and your workers are paid fairly. They're striking for something really simple, as I said before, and that is a fair wage. 
And anyone who doesn't support this kind of action, who doesn't support this motion today, clearly doesn't think that those workers deserve that fair wage. You only go on strike at the very last resort. I know that. I've done it. I stood on the picket line with Councillor Hoskin. You don't do it for fun and you certainly don't do it at this time of year to enjoy the weather. So I'm waiting to see with bated breath what the opposition parties say. Um, I probably won't hold my breath because I'm pretty sure what Councillor Robinson will say. However, I'd like to point out that if you're not on, on the side of the workers, then you're not on the side of the people of Reading and you're not on the side of workers across the UK. These people deserve a decent pay rate. They deserve sick pay and they deserve to be respected for the hard work they do. So I support this motion wholeheartedly. Thank you, Councillor Hacker. Um, Councillor Simon Robinson. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd like to begin by thanking Councillor Hoskin for bringing this motion to full council this evening and for raising awareness on the issues of the security contract of the Royal Barcher Hospital. Not for the first time, I find myself agreeing with Councillor Hoskin on many of the points raised. It is, in my opinion, a deplorable situation, especially under the current climate and with the clear and significant risks posed by the pandemic that staff employed by the supplier to work at the hospital are subject to what is clearly exploitation given the pay rate applicable and the poor conditions of service for those not stupid. The irony being that on the supplier's website and its marketing, it clearly states we care and value our people that care for you. For a um, um, to the mass, this clearly should allow for a reasonable uh, hourly rate and for the supplier to maintain adequate profit margins. However, if, as Councillor Hoskins relates, that the employees receive the low rate of between £9.12 and £10.18, depending on their role per hour, then even after consideration of the additional employment and management costs of pension, recruitment, training, payroll, uniforms, etc., one can assume that the profit margins are exceptionally high, and this could be construed by some as excessive profiteering on the part of the supplier at the expense of the public sector and ultimately the taxpayer, which in my opinion is highly immoral and unethical. Kingdom Security Services, the supplier, as we know, are responsible for providing outsourced services to many businesses, as well as other local government and, and other NHS trusts. Bad publicity, such as this attracts not only is potentially highly damaging to their reputation, but will, I am sure, have a significant impact on their credibility when contracts are due for renewal in their ability to track new business and ultimately on future revenue. So it is in their best interest to do the right thing and abide by and honour this statement in their marketing. I would also note that to arrive at this stage, I would also question the management of the service level agreements in place between the NHS Hospital Trust and the supplier and feel that this should be looked in as a matter of urgent concern. I am sure that when the existing contract for the provision of security services for the hospital comes to an end, that the NHS Hospital Trust will have serious choices to make, whether to renew, to tender for a new third party provider or to bring the services back in house, which is their prerogative. This, of course, is a matter for the NHS Hospital Trust to address. As to the recommended actions, we certainly support the cause for the security guards in question. We welcome the intervention of ACAS in the hope that this brings speedy resolution. We also have no objections to our council leader writing to the chief executive of the, of, uh, the Royal Barcher NHS Trust to raise the concerns and help try and bring about resolution with their supplier in our capacity as a local authority. However, we cannot countenance nor condone directly approaching the NHS supplier in question. I would remind Council that the commercial contract is between the NHS Hospital Trust and Kingdom Security Services, and we as a Council are not a party to this contract. Any such action in terms of direct contact with the supplier could be seen as unwarranted interference and might even prove counterproducting 
counterproductive for those concerned. Whilst I may agree with the sentiments and the good intention behind the final recommendation, I feel we cannot support this motion fully with this recommended action in place for the reasons I have stated. It is also fair to state that the very strong message within the final recommendation should ideally be relayed to the supplier by the NHS Hospital Trust in their capacity as the customer in this instance. In view of this and to gain cross-party approval for this motion, I'd like to move an amendment which is to allow the motion as written to stand with one exception, and that is to remove the last recommended action, which reads, request that the leader of the council write to Kingdom Security, urging it to consider the level of danger and risks that its staff are taking in their duties and to adjust the profit margins to meet the reasonable case being made by the staff. I believe this message has more impact coming from the NHS Hospital Trust directly. I trust all councils will, will review this amendment favourably and its good intent in the light of the reasons mentioned. And thus I move this amendment and recommend its accept, acceptance by this council. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Robertson. Do you have a second for your amendment? I do indeed, Councillor Jane Stamford Beale. Councillor Stamford Beale. So, Councillor, you just indicated you're going to second and reserve your right. Understood. Right. So, um, I have. So, we're now obviously talking to the amendment, and the first speaker I have actually is leader of the council, Councillor Brock. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have to say it's one of the most surreal amendments uh, I've ever come across. I mean. Firstly, conceptually, it doesn't really make any sense to me uh, and is particularly unusual because just in the last fortnight, uh, a member of Councillor Robinson's group has asked me to um, lobby a private employer about another matter. I don't think it's probably appropriate to discuss the ins and outs of it here. Um, so it seems that there's some disagreement even within his own group about what it is and is not appropriate um, for the leader of the council to do in terms of lobbying private firms. Um, but even 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 beyond that, I mean, clearly, when we see an injustice in the world, it is incumbent upon us to use the the levers that are afforded to us, which are not that extensive in this case. Council Robinson is entirely right to to point out that this is a matter primarily between the NHS Foundation Trust and their private provider. But it doesn't mean that we have to sit silently on the sidelines. And of course, we have the ability to make representation, to lobby and to seek a resolution that we feel is a just one. Um, and it's quite right that we would look to do that. So, of course, why do we have the amendment that's before us? Well, for one simple reason, and Councillor Roberts has already let the cat out of the bag, because when we vote against the amendment, as we will be voting against this amendment, uh, it gives the Conservative group an excuse to vote against the entire uh, motion before us because they don't want to vote in favour of the motion because they don't want to vote to protect and to enhance the working conditions of the security guards at the Royal Berkshire Hospital. But they know that would look bad in public, so they need to find the most spurious of reasons to throw the toys out of the pram and turn around and say, well, we offered to work cross party, but the Labour group didn't accept it. And the reason we're not accepting it is because this is simply nonsensical. So we'll be voting against this amendment this evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, <coughs> Councillor Brock. So I see nobody else indicating. So Councillor Stamford Beale, would you like to second the motion? Mr Mayor, um, I think Councillor Robinson has made all the points necessary. Um, yes, we agree with the motion as stated by Councillor Hoskins that um, the staff are not being well treated at the moment, but this is a contractual matter between the staff and the subcontractor at the hospital and therefore we are not able to, to, to support the leader of the council writing to Kingdom Security at this moment on this matter. I'll leave it at that for this evening. I think we're late enough as it is. Thank you. Thank you very much. So 
nobody else obviously indicated um, to speak on the amendment, so I'll now take a vote. And I think again we can do it by acclamation because the two main groups have indicated their position. So all those in favour of the amendment, please indicate now. Agreed. 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 And therefore, we revert back to the original substantive motion. And, and I got to um, Councillor Robinson had spoken on the motions. The next speaker on the main motion is Councillor Rob White. Councillor White. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Green councillors support this motion. The security staff provide an essential service at the hospital and they deserve fair pay. It's obviously disappointing that this service has been outsourced in the first place, but but we are where we are. Uh, we think this is a true David and Goliath struggle between the low paid security staff and a large corporation. Green councillors support the security staff and their action for fair pay. We will be supporting the motion. So right, um, next up, Councillor Gittings, Councillor Paul Gittings. Uh, thank you, um, thank you, thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayor. I mean, listening to Councillor Robinson speaking, I was for a moment I thought he was going to support this uh, motion, but um, sadly, sadly not. And, and you know, the spurious amendment. I think we're all left scratching, scratching our head. Uh, so you know, so much for the Tory levelling up agenda. It's we're still levelling down, but um, perhaps they might reconsider in in, in the future when we get this type of motion. Um, look. I've um, and I'm grateful for the green support and hope obviously the Lib Dems as well support this um, this motion. I mean, these security guards, I mean, they've stood on the picket line. We've probably all seen them out of the Royal Berkshire Hospital in freezing and wet conditions, I think for about 50 days to press their case. And I know they've received a lot of support from passing motorists and and others. And I've stood with them on a couple of occasions. And, and, and spoke with them. And I can tell you they're all completely dedicated to their job at the Royal Barks and have given many years of service. They're highly skilled in these roles and really importantly have a brilliant rapport with the staff and importantly also the patients at the hospital. So that's because that's obviously really important. And they, you know, they've carried out their duties during a COVID pandemic with all the risks that's entailed. And they only took this strike action at the very last resort. But as uh, I think as Councillor Hacker and others have mentioned, high cost areas such as Reading, their paying conditions, their lack of sick pay. I mean, some have even, I think, had to pay for their own CCTV training. It's they're simply not good enough. In fact, actually, it's a, it's a disgrace that they're being paid this, this wage at the moment. So uh, hopefully we're going to pass this motion tonight and send our message to Kingdom Security, which is a company that makes a lot of money with these type of contracts, both in the NHS and other areas. So the message is, when I, the ACAS talk, talks, I think, bit, had a bit of bit the dust very quickly, as the risory offer without going into all, all the details of that. But Kingdom Security settle this dispute and pay the staff the proper rate for the, such an exacting role. And if you don't, I'm pretty sure as well there's going to be a ballot for further industrial action, and which I'm pretty sure will will, uh, will mean that we'll be have more of this outside the hospital. And it's going to damage your reputation in this area. And I think as well as the motion saying, a Councillor Hoskin referred to this, the Royal Barch Hospital Trust, when the contract is renewed this year, this year, make sure there are proper provisions to pay the staff what they demand. That can be standard practice in any sort of these operations where you're outsourcing. You can write in guarantees that the staff are paid the living wage or above. And actually, preferably uh, for the Royal Barks, I would hope that actually they do seriously consider taking this um, service back in-house. And I'm sure that they could, um, all the people that are working and now given many years of service, they would gratefully uh, look upon that 
And as I say, hopefully they'll get the rewards that they deserve for their incredible efforts, both in the pandemic and before. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Gettings. A um, couple more speakers. Uh, Councillor Devine. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to thank, first of all, Councillor Hoskin for bringing this subject to our attention. Um, because the treatment of RVH security guards by Kingdom Security uh, would, in my words, be or is described as despicable. The guards, having had their numbers reduced and having to cope with the extra risks involved in, as a result of the, of the COVID pandemic, uh, I think uh, this is just not acceptable behaviour on the part of their employers. No night pay, no sick pay uh, from a giant corporation of that size I think Kingdom Security should be ashamed of themselves. Uh, we will absolutely be supporting this motion tonight. Um, and I'm sad to say it's just one further example of outsourcing having a deleterious effect on paying conditions of the workers uh, involved. Um, I'm really disappointed with Kingdom Security uh, and we should, uh, never mind writing to uh, the Kingdom Security and the Chief Executive of the Royal Berkshire Hospital, um, but I think we should also actually pen a letter of support to the workers themselves, to their union. Thank you, Councillor Devine. Um, Councillor Rachel Eden. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. This is the anniversary of the lockdown and we have just been reflecting on the last year and we were pausing, I'm sure all of us, to remember those who have been lost uh, to Covid, to those who have suffered from COVID and also reflecting with gratitude on all the key workers who have done so much to keep our community together over the last year. The security guards at the Royal Berkshire Hospital have been so much appreciated and so much part of that over the last year and I know that um, many of us would have appreciated their support and their work in the years prior to COVID. When our NHS staff at the Royal Berkshire Hospital are in danger or th under threat, when patients at the Royal Berkshire are under, in danger or under threat, they are the people whom are called on. They are the people who we turn to. And now they are turning to us to ask for our support. It's a role that I know I would not be able to fulfil, and I'm sure many of us um, are aware of um, things that have gone viral on social media, fortunately not at our own Royal Berkshire, but in other hospitals where we've seen um, the, the pressure that security guards are put under in hospitals, uh, particularly uh, during this time of COVID. This is a team that could not be more key, could not be more frontline. And the pay currently on offer is damaging to recruitment. It is damaging to the dignity of those workers and I think there are concerns about um, the health and safety of that team including issues around them having to pay for their own training. I, I used to be surprised by Conservative councillors finding every opportunity for opposing motions for spurious reasons after having agreed with the bulk of a motion and putting forward as the leader said a, a pretty much a nonsensical um, amendment um, but tonight I, I did wonder if after all, we had just reflected together as one council on the last year that perhaps they would make an exception tonight. But, you know, for whatever reason, they've chosen to abdicate their responsibility um, to stand by from showing solidarity with those key workers who have done so much for us, with the security guards who are keeping the NHS staff, their colleagues safe. Um, I don't know why they've done it. As the leader said, it, uh, suggested, it is, in my opinion, I'm sorry to say, quite pathetic. I don't know whether it's because they simply want to avoid agreeing with the Labour group or is it because they don't want to embarrass their national party by taking a divergent approach to pay for NHS staff to what's going on uh, with the national um, offer to nurses and other NHS staff. But anyway, I'm embarrassed that any councillor would seek today of all days to show solidarity with our NHS staff and our security guards at the Royal Berkshire. However, I would say any day is a good day to support our NHS heroes. So let's just get this motion passed and show these key workers that the vast majority of the councillors 
on this council wish to show them solidarity and support that they deserve from us. Thank you, Eden. Um, OK, so in that case, I think um, our last speaker is going to be Councillor Hoskins, who's going to sum up and then move his motion. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Councillor. Uh, Mr Mayor, uh, from, apologies for my premature uh, moving the motion earlier. Um, thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank most of the uh, Council for their support and and actually all the speakers mostly um, for their excellent uh, speeches in support of the workers uh, in, in this case. And I think, you know, what I was hearing, I mean, what I was hearing was almost a unanimous, unanimity in terms of the view around the situation. Um, and, it, and it's a good job that I'm not, you know, not a betting man. I had a, you know, a lot of discussion with my colleagues and I was fairly confident that the Conservative group would support this motion because why on earth wouldn't they? Uh, and so it was a good job that I didn't make a bet on that because, as Councillor Brock says, you know, if we're now going to say that we're not going to write to employees, employers of uh, of local people, to, to local businesses, to um, people who employ Reading residents, if we believe they're in the wrong, I think that's a, an extraordinary statement. And um, and I would actually like perhaps the Conservative colleagues to just reflect for one moment and, and think again, it's not too late to support this motion. It is right that if this council uh, believes that a local employer is behaving uh, wrongly, it's behaving uh, harshly towards it, it's, uh, it's despicable, I think, is the words I heard from Councillor uh, Robinson or certainly something like that, then actually it is our position, it's our right, in fact, our obligation to make uh, very strongly our view on that and to communicate directly to uh, that local employer. Um, to do otherwise, there's no reason why we wouldn't do that. There's no reason why we shouldn't do that in future. And um, we absolutely should do that now. So I do, you know, perhaps I, I speak to and, and hope to get a hearing from the uh, from the council, the Conservative group, a unanimous uh, response to uh, this would be most welcomed by the security staff. Uh, think again uh, on your reasons for not supporting this. Uh, motion because it just does not stand up to scrutiny. Councillor Devine made a really good point about uh, writing to uh, the, the workers themselves. I think we'll absolutely do that. They do, and well, they're not probably literally watching closely. I'm not sure how many people literally watch uh, these uh, council broadcasts, but they are uh, keenly aware of this motion uh, and of what uh, is happening here. We will communicate back to them uh, the support of uh, the majority of the councillors. I'd like to say the support of all the councillors. That's up to the Conservative group uh, now. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that motion and uh, you know, sincerely hope that all councillors will now vote for it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Hoskins. We now obviously move to a vote and I think again we can probably do an acclamation. So all those in favour of the motion, please indicate your support. Agreed. 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 And those against? Against. Okay. Relaxed. Against. Okay, so Conservative Ooh. group still against. That's fine. So the motion is carried. Um, we understand that. And I think that is it for the evening. So thank you very much, everybody, for your contributions. I hope the um, public that watched that found it informative and interesting. Um, we wish very best of wishes to the three departing councillors leading us this evening. And we wish you well. And with that, I'll close the meeting. Thank you very much, everybody. Good night, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Good night. Thanks, everyone. Good night, Mr. Mayor. Nice, Mr. Nice. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thanks very much. Go. Go. Good night. Good night. Good. Okay, we're all.